All right then. So what I'm going to need you to do is come at me. Like you are going to kill me with that knife. You'll be fine. We got the best doctor on the planet. Plus, you wanted to have a robot arm, right? All right, all right, let me explain the title before people come at me with torches and pitchforks. This is more or less a video talking about the tiers of animals and their uses. Really think of this as a clickbaiting tier list video, and before you start sending your snipers and ninja assassins at me, just remember this is more or less the opinion of Newbert Incorporated. But hey, if you wish to debate me down in the comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts on animals. Maybe we missed something or perhaps you agree with me. Also, while you are at it, how about subscribing and hitting that bell icon? Seriously, I'd recommend it because YouTube's site seems designed to mess with us in every new way. Just the other day, I had to fight a wave of angry beavers just to upload this video. Uh, there seriously needs to be a better way to upload these videos. <coughs> yeah, so every little bit of help can help. Same with our Patreon, where one buck a month can go a long way. There's also our Discord, where you can chat with me and send me messages and explaining why I'm wrong about a particular thing. All right, we got everything done? All right, then let's go. Let's get on with the video. Why do I say you hate your dogs? Really, I don't mean it like that. I feel it should say hate having your dogs in the colony. There are a couple of reasons for that, which I will get into. But first, we are going to go over the tiers of animals and why they belong there. Should also mention this is a base game, so no alpha animals, no vanilla animals expanded, and definitely no cat girls. Finally, as of writing this video, the 1.3 version of RimWorld hasn't come out. If there are any changes to vanilla animals, then our apologies for data. That's now it isn't true, you know what I mean? So let's begin. Editor, drop in the tier list. That's right, it's one of those videos, and today we are going to rank every vanilla Rimworld animal. So what do these grades mean? Well, it's simple. D grade tier is trash. It's animals that, unless you're memeing, you really shouldn't have. They either have no use, too hard to tame for what you get, or have some other problem that keeps them from being a value to your colony. C tier animals are animals that are fine if you have them, or if you don't, then there is no problem. I should mention any D grade animal that's bonded to a colonist, I do consider C grade due to the mood buff a colonist gets for having a pet. But think of it like a low C, just barely valuable. B grade are very useful animals, either for their resources, carrying ability, or combat ability. Having them can be pretty helpful. A grade are high quality animals that you should try your best to get. Only reason not to get them is either you already have plenty of animals, limited space, and or resources, or trying to challenge yourself. Finally, S grade is the top grade. The best of the best that you should always attempt to get. Only reason not to get them is no pawns who can handle handle animals or you don't have enough food, okay? Everyone got that? Nice. All right, first off is D tier, and there's plenty to talk about for this one. First off, the insectoids in the form of mega scarabs, mega spider, and spilipedes. Yeah, that's right. Mechanically, you can tame them, though let's be honest, unless you are playing with mods like vanilla expanded insectoids, you really won't be playing with them, and in the base game, you definitely can have better creatures. Just do your part and wipe them off the face of the rim world. Next up, uh, five useless birds, yeah. In the form of the cassowary, turkey, ostrich, emus, and geese. Why these five? Well, they have a lot of things in common. Mostly is the fact that while they lay eggs, they either don't lay enough to give back to the colony, unlike chicken, which we will talk about later, and with emus, ostriches, and cassowaries, they are extremely hard to tame. Hell, in fact, with emus, if you fail to tame one, it will snap and turn on the would-be handler. Yeah, see, this is why Australia lost a war against them. No serious Seriously, look it up. The Australian war against emus was a thing, and they couldn't win because these demon birds could take so many rounds it wasn't cost effective at all to actually shoot them. So for that, I have to give emus an honorary S ranking when facing Australian colonists. Oh, by the way, with turkeys and geese, turkeys don't lay unfertilized eggs and only lay one to three eggs every 11 days, and geese can only be found through trading, and it takes a total of 36 days for a goose to hatch. And become a full egg-laying adult. Definitely not worth having over chickens. 
There is also some four-legged animals that you can get that really aren't worth much outside of the maybe some meat shields or just, you know, butchering. These are ibex rams and does, goats, raccoons, gazelles, deers, alpha beavers, iguanas, and squirrels. Ibex rams and does saving graces is their ability to be trained to attack and defend, but you are better off hunting them for meat. Same with deers, gazelles, and raccoons. Now what's interesting is goats aren't a milking animal, which took me and my writer by surprise since goat milk is a normal thing outside on the rim. Sure, we didn't expect them to out milk a cow, but if they could give some form of product, they wouldn't be useless. Alpha beezers are something I don't know why you would want. They eat wood and will eat your supply. Just kill them and save the trees. Iguana and squirrels are animals I wish could be better. Iguanas are really cool in real life as pets, but the ones here are super wild at 50 and can't seem to defend anything. Squirrels can't nuzzle or do much outside of being easy kills or easily your colonists do. If Randy Random decides to send a manhunting pack your way in the game, well, late game specifically. <laughs> Oh, sorry, something in my throat. <laughs> oh my so why put these four in D tier? Well, in the chaos, they are an organization that G.I. Joe has to fight and they clearly hate the American way. I mean, Cobras in RimWorld are too slow to be a viable god animal and even if you could teach them to fight for you, they have a nasty problem. Their bites cause toxic damage and they tend to kill animals that either fight them or they fight and cause the corpse to rot away thanks to the toxins. <laughs> causing the snake to hunt more since it couldn't eat. I recommend just going full Simpsons whacking away on the snakes. Finally, rats and boom rats. Boom rats are here because while you can use them as suicide bombs, boom lobes do this job so much better and unlike their bigger cousins, boom rats can't be milked for chem fuel. Normally, they would be a C tier as a budget walking grenade, but that's not it. They take a handling skill of 7, which is insane since boom and lobes only take 5. This takes them from a low C to a high D. Honestly, it sucks how their only value is overshadowed by a better animal. At least they can nuzzle but still not worth having an animal that explodes when dying in your base that isn't giving you something back. As for our regular rats, they really are only good for two things, being easy tames for training colonists since you only need four handling and eating corpses. Only problem with the latter is any animal that can eat meat will eat a corpse. So really rats don't have a place, though I should mention if you are rar, rats go up to S tier. I don't know what we feeds them, but they are deadly rats, must be the stew, probably the stew. Yeah, stew. So that was everything in D tier, onwards to C tier, where the animals are a little better for the colony. Moving on to C rank, let's talk about the animals that aren't useful for resources but are somewhat useful in keeping your colony sane. The Nuzzleless, monkeys, chinchillas, capybaras, cats, hare, and snow hares, guinea pigs, and Yorkshire terriers are animals that won't be able to defend you but will nuzzle at a decent rate to give your colonists a bit of a mood buff. Though I should mention, when it comes to monkeys, I'm a bit disappointed they are super intelligent but you can't train them to haul. But come on, look at this, opposable thumbs, great intelligence, and all around good moxie. Oh well, least they can nuzzle so they are decent enough. Chinchillas are of course our colony's favorite animal, and who could blame us, they're cute. They nuzzle and look at how they bathe. Aww. That's why we consider them S rank. They're really cute and also deadly since we train ours in the art of a plasma sword. <laughs> For everyone else, C rank. With cats and Yorkshire terriers, capybaras, guinea pigs, and both types of hares, they are standard animals that can nuzzle and keep colonists slain. They might bond and keep them even happier, though being pet animals makes them fragile. So please, for the love of fox, don't put them in the line of fire. Moving on further into C rank, we have caribou, elk, mega sloths, ducks, pigs, and bison. These animals are here due to being resource animals who don't give as much resources as some of the higher tiered animals. Caribou and elk can give milk which honestly I feel is a weird animal to milk if I'm being honest. More so since again goats can't be milked in this game. But even so, at 12 milk every two days, you aren't going to get much. At least they can be trained to defend your colonists should mention at 
Christmas time, caribou are S tier. I don't even need to explain why. Ducks and pigs are farm animals that really feel like lesser versions of chickens and bulls. Respectively though, pigs do give more meat when butchered and can be taught to haul because pigs are surprisingly smart and trainable. In real life, there is the problem of how you can only find pigs from traders definitely lowers their value from the more common boar cousins. Ducks, meanwhile, can be found in the wild and they are basically lesser chickens due to having the same stats except they lay one egg every three and a half days versus a chicken's one egg every two days. It might not seem like much, but it does add up over time. Still, having a duck isn't so bad if you can swing it, and ducks can be pretty cool, especially when you hear tales of their adventures. Ducks tale. Bison are decent as pack animals, and you can get wool from them. But at 25 days for 100 wool, you are going to be waiting a while before you get the benefits from that. And Mega Sloths, definitely a hard animal to keep happy with a wild nature of 97%. You are more likely to piss it off than make it your friend. But if you can overcome the odds. You got an animal that can haul, nuzzle, and its shearable fur is some of the best insulating fur for cold area playthroughs. But that difficulty to tame just doesn't make it viable. Better taming methods I recommend is hunting it, bringing it down, and hope that medic who tends to it can bond with the beast. Next is some animals that are decent enough at defending the colonists in the form of a lynx and rhino. The lynx is here because there are far better animals you can pick up for a defense one, but at least the lynx has a decent amount of attack and can even stun targets for a small period of time. Just be careful for how well they are at 80% and not to mention the 8 animal handling skills. Rhinos are also in the camp for dangerous animals to hunt and tame, but if you can befriend a rhino, you will have a seriously strong animal that can take on some of the toughest opponents though at a 90% wildness with a handling skill of 9 being needed to even attempt to try and tame it. I can rank it any higher than a C tier. Still having one is pretty cool. Rhinos are pretty neat. Just be careful around them. In real life, they are bad vision, so they tend to perceive everything around them as a threat. Okay, time for the last member of C rank, and I'm sure I'm going to get some hate for this one, but the last member of C rank is the Thrumbo. Now hear me out. The Thrumbo is a majestic animal, one that every colony wishes to have, but when you look at the facts, it just isn't a very good animal to have in general. First off, they have a wildness of 98%. Yeah, even at 20 handling skills, you have a 1% chance of taming with a 1.8% chance of snapping. If you can tame them through a miracle or you decided to fight these fur death machines, you now have an animal that your handlers will consistently be forced to train as they are hard to keep from going wild. Not to mention they eat a lot of food and wood. Your gardeners are doomed with it around. Though some good things about the Thrumbo, they are extremely tanky, more than the Rhino since they can actually withstand direct hits of a Doomsday rocket launcher. So perfect for that, if a bit cruel, they can haul, which is always nice, and for rescuing they are pretty fast. So you can have a tanky ambulance animal, plus having one is a bragging rights reward, but I just can't in good conscience say they are a good animal. Strong yes, but having one has so many downsides, it's really not worth the trouble. If you want to debate me on this, then Please post in your comments your thoughts. I'm more than happy to listen to them. Now, here there are two types of B rank animals one who can give resources and one who can fight. First up, for ones to give resources are sheep and cows and chickens. Sheep are adorable animals that have no taming requirements and never go back to the wi being wild, you know what I mean? Not to mention, every 10 days you get a sizable amount of wool from uh, making them great for clothing or just sellable materials. Meanwhile, cows and chickens are here because of their value and how much resources you get. One chicken will lay one egg every two days and that egg can replace the meat requirement in a fine meal. Plus chickens take only one quadrant to fully mature meaning an investment of a chicken and brewster can become an entire barn full of loud egg laying machines. Cows meanwhile give up to 18 units of milk a day depending on the handling skill of the colonists doing the milking but because of this you are actually breaking the laws of thermodynamics so no seriously. One cow requires 1.36 nutrients to to survive a day while giving out at least 0.9 nutrients in the form of its milk, which can be turned into 1.62 nutrients in the form of simple or fine meals. Meaning, you can feed a cow simple meals made of veggies and in return get more back. Now granted, this little cycle 
is lost by having bulls in the farm, along with calves. You are a raisin, but you can get it back by slaughtering any calves you don't want. Still, for what it's worth, it's great investment if you can buy them. Yeah, that's right. The reason chicken and cows aren't a ranked is due to the fact that you have to buy them. You can't find them. No, no, no. Out, not, not out in the wild. A shame too, but they, they that's life. It's how it happens. Definitely pick up if you can. You won't be sorry. Now, I need to figure out what to do with all the eggs, milk, I've collected. Now then, on to the rest of B tier, that being animals who are good for hauling and fighting. Those being elephants, red, fennec, and arctic foxes, wild boars, timber, and arctic wolves, cougars, panthers, horses, donkeys, grizzly, and polar bears, and finally, tortoises? Brent, am I reading that right? Okay then, I'll trust you. But yeah, these animals are B-tiered for being good all-around animals that can fight and haul useful traits around the colony. First are the wild boars who sadly can't haul like they used to. If they could, they would be S-tier. Thanks to their ease of taming, fast breeding, and all-around good stats makes them a great animal being bred for war. Seriously, these animals are great for god animals. Just assign one of them to each colonist and you can feel safe when they go out to do something. Dangerous, that is. And with how easy it is to tame a breed them, you won't be running out of angry pigs. But seriously, about the angry pigs, be careful when hunting them. Boars are badass and dangerous, running faster than colonists, and those tusks can easily gore you with armor piercing. Great when your enemy is on the receiving end, not you. Next, the cougar and panther both are the same kind of animals, stat-wise, and make decent god animals if you tame them. Naturally dangerous if provoked, red arctic and fennec foxes are the exact animal stat-wise and all-around decent at fighting and hauling. They are a bit on the weaker side, but make up for it with stunning attacks that are above average and 4.67 seconds, plus they nuzzle, which is always a bonus. Timber and Arctic Wolves are great animals for their speedy ability to haul, not to mention being good boys and girls. Only problem in their wildness, sure, they can be good boys, but at 85% wildness, you might struggle to keep them from going wild again. But hey, you can meme them. Grizzly and polar bears are walking fur death machines, but hey, they can also be tamed to be haulers and combat guards, but like wolves, pretty wild at 80%, so poo bear might be back to the wild if you aren't careful. Still great health and great damage. With a 7 second stun attack, they can be super helpful in defending the colony. I should also mention to be careful out in colder climates, polar bears are more common, and since there is less prey, you are more than likely to end up on the menu. Horses and donkeys have been used for centuries by humanity as pack animals, and who could blame them? They are strong, able to carry a lot of things out on the road, and worse comes to worse, they can defend themselves with a good hard kick. Yeah, that kick is armor piercing, by the way. Donkeys are weaker than horses, but in return never go back to being wild, while horses will always have a bit of a wild nature, but both are great for caravanning or just having good hauling animals. Next up, the elephant. They are big and powerful, like rhinos, but unlike rhinos, they can actually haul thanks to their intelligence and still act as a defense animal. They also are one of the best caravan animals with a carry capacity of 140 kilograms of weight. To compare, an alpaca can only carry 35, though they are wild at 75%. I recommend giving it a shot. With how strong they are, having one is just having a walking shield. Oh, and one other note, they can nuzzle. Aww. Actually, with how precious elephants are, maybe don't take them out of the wild or hunt them. Just overwhelmed by cuteness. I'll be back to my evil self in a moment. <coughs> Finally, we got Tortoise, which you might think should be long in the lower tier. Oh, contraire, my wonderful viewers, a Tortoise has one factor that makes it a great pet. Their defense. A Tortoise gets 35% damage resistant for blunt with 50 for sharp damage and onto their small size, so they're harder to hit. Built-in armor and a pretty decent health pool. You got the perfect animal to put in choke points to delay or even kill invaders. I'm not joking when I say I've noticed death predators on the map who died trying to kill the still living tortoises. Yeah, definitely worth taming and farming if you want the slow but durable animal. Now onto a ring. Great animals you should try and obtain because what they do is really good. Those animals being the muffalo, alpaca, dromedaries, the axe, bisons, huskies, and labradors. So the mighty muffalo. Definitely a favorite of Rimworld players for their adorable look, great carrying abilities, and their wool is easy to get since they are pretty easy to tame. 
with only needing five skill. Sadly though, they are stuck at a mid A rank. Thanks to one problem, they used to give milk back in the day. They would give wool and milk and would be the best animal to get because they could practically do everything except haul. If you are for some reason playing the old version of Rimworld or got a mod for that, these muffalo are to be S rank uh, no contest at all. So who took the muffalo's ability to be milked? That would be the yaks. And dromedaries, both giving milk at 12 units every two days. Both are also also decent haulers, making them also great choices for colony animals. The alpaca is also a great choice because they give a decent amount of wool, not as much as a muffalo, but they do have the benefit of being easy to tame with a minimum handling skill of zero, and they never go wild. Definitely a good early colony animal, plus alpaca are so cute in real life. Finally, we got the two doggos, the Labrador and the Husky. Both great animals for their fighting and hauling and plus the nuzzle, but it would be weird if they couldn't. Both animals, when tamed, don't go wild and are easy enough to do so. Labradors are weaker than Huskies, but in turn eat less. If you want to know, honestly, either or is good for me. More good doggos is good for any colony, if you ask me. It's been a long while, but now it's time for the final rank, the S rank. And there is only two animals, I believe, long on here. First off, the Boomerlo. This is a top tier animal, you should always attempt to get the one important reason, chem fuel. Their ability to make chem fuel for you makes them invaluable in the end game, either for making mortars, powering up generators, or even as a trade item. There is also the fact they are easy to tame at five handling skill, Finally, their ability to explode makes them great for attack animals. Sure, you will more than likely lose your walking grenades, but they are common enough you can tame or breed a whole lot of them. Just be careful with butchering them. You might wonder about the second one. For me, it's the warg. Definitely a top tier one. Wargs are definitely not top tier. I should know. I wrote this list. Well, I did say I'm always down to debate, so let's hear them. Thank you. People of the court, he claims that they are top tier, but I believe they are at most C tier. First up, their diet. Unlike other animals, wargs can only live off meat, meaning you will have to work harder to keep them well fed. Most other animals can be fed on a diet of kibble or even simple meals, which can be made of vegetables. I suppose that's true, but you get a powerful animal that can haul. Not to mention their attacks have a stun of 6.67 seconds, which is well above average. They also only take 27 days to mature, so breeding more of them means you got a pack of rival wolves and dogs. You won't need to worry about food since you can hunt other animals or use raider corpses. Can't argue with that, except you forgot one key issue, taming them. They have a 60% wildness, which, well, better than, say, a wolf's 80%. Wolves don't go manhunter at 35%. If the dice don't roll in your favor, you're gonna lose a colonist thanks to them tearing him apart. Yeah, but they have a minimum handling requirement of 5, so they can be tamed early on. If you get lucky, you get a powerful ally that can help you through the whole game, dude. If you are lucky. Luck may play a bit of a role in RimWorld, but I do like to try and expect the worst. Hmm, that was weird. Right, anyway, that was our tier list, not to mention a long video. Hopefully you agree with our thoughts on the matter, and if not, well, let us know. I do wonder how future updates will change things. Maybe we might have to revisit this topic later. Bren, send in the meme for today's video. Alpaca 1, opening the side door. My colonists at their defensive positions near the kill box. <laughs> Yeah, that pack is gonna murder everybody. <laughs> thank you all for watching the video. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and comment down below. Um, thank you everybody that supported this channel on Patreon. Roll the credit roll! If you're not on Patreon, feel free to go and support us. It helps out a lot. Every dollar counts. It goes a long way. And you can see videos before they even end up on YouTube. I know, right? Special privileges. Alright, go click on another video.